I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Slicing through the waves, a shadow in the night, Akizuki's on the prowl, ready for the fight. Guns blazing, foes facing, she dances in the fray. A storm of steel and thunder, she'll sweep you all away. Hey team, this is Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got fun video right now with two Krakens in a row. And uh, yeah, spoiler alert, this is a blast. I did not believe it myself, but man, Akazuki so, so powerful. Let's take a look at the replays. But before we begin, if you want to support the channel, like what we're doing here, thumbs up, like button below, as well as leave any comments about what we can do better if you like the video or what we can uh, do to learn from something as well, because we're uh, all about making good friendships, building a better community and having fun at the same time. So let's get to it. Right now we're in the Akazuki Tier 8 Japanese kind of Hiragumo line. Basically, Gunboat Destroyer, this is uh, essentially, my personal opinion, one of the most powerful destroyers in the game. Four sets of guns, double turrets, and uh, pen 30 millimeters. Pretty awesome. That's pretty much sums it up right there. But man, right here, Kosak with RPF showing where his location is, and we have fire support with a Baltimore behind us. So I feel comfortable taking this guy one-on-one. -on -one. Again, you can also learn great just by observing the video. I always learned how to do great strategies and techniques with destroyers just by watching people play. And uh, hope this video gives you something to learn, lesson, and to have a blast. And I hope you enjoy it as well. But right now, look, Kosak reversing into smoke, not a very good idea. If, and especially nose in, really gives you no options. And really just gonna melt this guy right down. Boom, he goes down. First destroyer eliminated from Alpha Cap. And as a good destroyer player, you wanna eliminate their destroyers first. Uh, not necessarily want to rush into a cap to your death like that Cossack just displayed. The reason why I just don't run into caps anymore because it's just too vulnerable. You don't want to die. The purpose of you as a destroyer is to literally survive the map and as well so that you can spot continuously, hunt their destroyers, torp, DD, everything that a de destroyer player is supposed to do. Uh, and that is including to survive because if you don't survive, you can't do anything when you're dead, right? So right now we're in the smoke. With, um, I've analyzed the situation and looked at the, the tab. Again, always a good thing to check the tab menu before you start a map. See what kind of radar, what kind of ships you're going up against. And noting that there is no destroyers, or I'm sorry, radar in the area. I'm going to go ahead and stay in my smoke. Normally, I don't recommend staying in smoke with a torpedo magnet. And then, of course, you can get caught in the open. But this one I feel kind of safe because I noticed there's not too much radar in the area. This is Tier 8. And then we're going to go ahead and farm as much as we can. And we're seeing, let's see here, the stored right there. I don't know. We'll take as much HP as I can take off of him. I don't believe he has a heal, so anything that I hit, it'll stick. Ooh, we get a nice torpedo hit right there off the bat of, uh, let's see here, who do we take a torpedo? Yeah, the battleship right there. So we're going to go continue to shoot at the store. Meanwhile, the New Mexico is running into our... Uh, our torpedoes there so hopefully we can get some nice hits going on right there so we're gonna go ahead and aim at new mexico new mexico i think he just did yeah, no he's still he might still be flooding let's see yep he is still flooding so we'll go ahead and start another fire getting more damage going right there again really really awesome the fact that these torpedoes i got that reload booster they go out to 10 kilometers not the greatest range a little higher tier 9 and 12 they go a little further maybe a 12 but you know what? Akazuki torpedoes are really good. They're defensive. Ooh, we get a nice hit in the back. And boom, splash one. First kill of the game. And you're going to see a lot of that going on in the Akazuki. You see the power of what the Akazuki can do. Now, the downside is it doesn't have any heals, but that's okay. We're going to speed this up a little bit here. It doesn't have any heals, but it has a decent amount of health pool for Tier A. 23,000 is pretty decent. Some Tier 10 ships don't even have 23,000. So pretty darn good, from my personal opinion, for what it, had, uh, what it can do. Unfortunately, you do have to play it very conservatively. You do not want to lose health in the early games or early stages of the game. You want to make sure you save them. Here we got the sword rushing back in with the help of his uh, battleship. Now, we're going to take this opportunity. Any chance we get, we can go ahead and fire and get as many shots on target as we can, noting that that damage will stick. And again, we're doing the best we can. Notice our, our team is still sitting in the back. So you know what? As a destroyer player, you want to lean forward, 
giving your uh, team that confidence to go, hey, look, my destroyer is open firing, open water gunboating, and he's up front near Alpha. Maybe I'll go ahead and help him out and support him because he's taking all the damage right now. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can start another front. Ooh, not until we see the store right here. He opens up on us, and that's why I like open water gunboating. It forces him out, and he comes out and risks his ship. He gets to splash two at 76,000 damage in the first seven minutes of the game. And here we go, starting another fire. We're going to go ahead and damage on that and fire and our guns. We want to and save our guns and firepower and DPM. Again, Akazuki, outstanding DPM-wise for what it does. Four sets of gun, double barrels each. It's kind of like that Marceau, uh, Kleber kind of gameplay. I love the fact that we have that many guns. And boom, splash, 384,000 damage right there. And that is our third kill. And eliminating the entire alpha cap flank. And that is how we roll, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now we've analyzed the area. And uh, the um, Cleveland, I believe, is not within range. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and go in and try to take alpha. Oh, actually, there he is. I kind of analyze, uh, his, hold the tab button down and look at Cleveland. I've analyzed that his radar is only out to nine kilometers. So as long as he goes behind that wall or stay outside of nine kilometers, I will not be affected and uh, revealed by his radar. So we feel kind of safe now. We can turn in. He's got that mountain and, and range of us. So we're not going to be um, uh, vulnerable to that. The Gascon is going to basically try to rush our flank, and that's what happens when people start getting desperate. They start making mistakes and rushing into their death. Let's see, we got the torpedo. Ooh, look at those torpedoes. I'm telling you, these torpedoes do pack a powerful punch and are very deadly within 10 kilometers. And notice we get a lot of damage right there, and it helps out a lot. Now, the Gascon is like that French battleship design, a lot of 32 mil or below plating all over. So I know that my shells pinning 30 mil will at least take majority of his armor out or uh, near his superstructure area should be able to melt easily. He takes that final shot and of course we uh, go ahead and secure that uh, cap right here and take it uh, for our team. Notice the rest of our team is now proceeding back to Bravo area. Bravo has got the Akazuki right there in the middle and uh, that's our other cousin. So let's go ahead and take him out and move straight for him. Again, RPF, a great tool. I definitely recommend it. Having uh, great situational awareness that let you know where the enemy is at. And as always, it gives you a great aspect of the battlefield because knowing where the enemy is is great because it gives you the ability to make the better decisions as opposed to throwing your ship away or rushing to your death. Okay, we're just taking blind shots here. And I think he's going to pop out a smoke in front of us. Yeah, he fired torpedoes. That's okay. He's being pushed by the man. Ooh, and here we go. We get uh, a nice spotting uh, of him over here. And we take the kill right there. Splash four. 110,000 damage. And this game is pretty much mopped up. But wouldn't it be fun if we could get a crack? And so let's go ahead and cap this bad boy over here. And go ahead and take on the Harlem. Let's see here. Launch some torpedoes. And now we're just going to open fire as much as we can. And this is where it's just trying to get a crack and winning hard right here. So I know I got enough health. He can fire at me all day long. Our shells are doing some nice damage. They're getting some non-pins on that uh, upper belt armor. As long as we're just aiming at his superstructure, we should be able to nail a lot of these shots. And again, as he's going away, just walking those shells back up into the, the top of his superstructure. I'm just kind of watching where the arcs go. He fires at us, but we don't care. His dispersion is going to be pretty poor, and uh, yeah, it's not going to do much to us. We're going to get some fires, get some nice pins, and can we secure the Kraken? Of course we do. That's the title of the video. But man, it is so enjoyable to know that this is what a destroyer can do and an impact on a game. And boom, there it is. Splash 5, Confederate and Kraken unleashed. 132,000 damage for the game, and that is how we rumble right there and uh, yep people are saying nice cracking and thank you for that compliment so let's move on to the next video over here take a look at what kind of stats we did right here 130,000 five ships killed and number one in the team of course and of course detailed report right here just blasting all these ships down and great high explosive and great torpedo damage as well a lot of fires so let's take a look at the next video and uh at right i'm li literally i'm if you look at the timestamp here like look at this right here uh at 8 30 in, in the evening right um right after this happens we go right into the next game and boom you're gonna see another cracking back to back with the akazuki pretty incredible all right, we're back here in the second game, not more than just a minute after that last battle. We hit the play button again, and we're into another battle. And oh my gosh, spoiler alert again. Holy crap, we're already in another Kraken battle, and it is so, so awesome. Uh, notice that the, I have the new Aslanes mod right there giving the uh, 3D uh, kind of uh, image of where RPF is locating. And, of course, we're just always having situation awareness with the RPF located. And no, right off the bat, my what is the point of my positioning right here? I don't want to rush into Alpha to my death, as you're going to see other Destroyer players are going to do. And you're going to notice that's a trend, and I learned from that. Rushing in doesn't really solve anything. You don't win the game by capping first. You win the game by holding and surviving. And that's the biggest thing. My Submarine and Zeton are the only ones I had support with, so I'd rather just attack Alpha from this side right here. 
And obviously, I can see the uh, the uh, destroyer firing from smoke. Again, this is why I do not recommend um, literally camping in smoke and spamming from smoke because over time, um, you will get in the situation where you're going to get uh, a mag be a magnet for torpedoes, and torpedoes just rush in, and you just are unsuspecting, especially at the lower tiers. So I'm really I, I recommend maybe firing from smoke, but always moving, or just don't do it for too long periods of time because again, situations like this are going to happen where you're just sitting there, you're thinking nothing's going to happen and then boom one torpedo takes you out like or two actually i believe yeah so mayhem goes down yep exactly why well, don't sit in smoke but anyways uh that that was just a lucky torpedo i mean i just launched it in the smoke and hopefully he moved forward and he just took it right on the nose right there so uh so we're gonna go ahead and do what destroyer players do we're gonna go ahead and cap we're gonna go ahead and spot and we're gonna eliminate any uh, other destroyer players in the area i'm not really sure if there is another destroyer player in here now let's try to speed it up a little bit. Yep, there is another star player. Now I smoke up and maybe hopefully get spotting from either the Zeton or the submarine, but we're going to see if we can start a fire on the Alabama. And we have another battleship over here. Okay, now take any opportunity you can to fire a destroyer because especially the lower tiers, they don't have heals. Most of the destroyers do not have heals, so any kind of shooting or hits you do right off the bat do pay in dividends in the long run because that damage sticks. So you want to make sure you are able to get as much health points down so that later in the long run of the game, that, that when that 1,000 health that, that was taken down in the early stages of the game will actually help you in the long run so that when you do need that that quick first look first kill opportunity he's just one shot away from dying and that helps you out in in, in, in the end game alabama is about forty-one thousand, so we can start another fire on him right there yep so a very very squishy ship for uh you know tier eight ish kind of area especially with 30 mil pin on the akazuki so anywhere that I'm aiming on superstructure wise can get a decent hit. Now, of course, his gun turrets and other uh, hard deck armor has got the very, very he heavy armor plating, so I'm not going to deal with that. I elect to actually get out of dodge right here because the Venito is going to push in. I'm not really sure if he's got any hydro or anything or if he pushes my smoke. So I'm going to go ahead and play conservative and kind of exit the smoke area. And of course, I know that there are no other destroyers in the area or within range. So again, I'm not staying in the smoke too long because I'm afraid of torpedoes. But again, uh, being very, very conservative. Now, let's see what the Venito does. Let's see here. I'll speed it up a little bit here. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and fire as much as we can and start a fire on him and see if we can get some more damage off of him. Alabama is just going in reverse now, uh, reversing battleships. I've uh, I've seen it all when you see that. I thought the point of battleships is to go in and brawl and have fun, right? And go ahead and tank. We've taken Alpha Cap. That's all right. Let's see if we can get more and more. Ooh, nice hit from the uh, Zeton right there on the Venito. Let's see if we can start another fire and help our buddy out get this guy out of the game. Let's see here. Yeah, just leading him a little bit farther. And the other, here's the other destroyer. I'm not too worried about him. He's about 11 kilometers away, so not a threat to me. There's one fire right there. Again, Akizuki, very, very powerful in the Japanese destroyer line for starting fires and having that high pen damage. Kind of almost like what the German destroyers have. And, you know, German destroyers have that uh, uh, kind of 32 millimeter penetration built in. Uh, as you get lower, maybe 30 mil or 26 mil. So it's a little bit better. And there it is, splash two, 35,000 damage. Yeah, so I do like the Japanese uh, Destroyer Alliance for that reason, and very good high pen angles, even when not, without playing with it for IFHE. It's got the smoke screens, it's got the engine boost, and he's even got the torpedo reload boosters if you need them. So, But really, these are the focus fire of the gunboat line of the uh, Harugumo line, the Japanese line, the Kitakaze, the Akazuki, the Harugumo. One of my favorite lines to, to uh, play. And um, actually, it's the cheapest one to do if you want to reset a line and get Research Bureau points. So that's what I've been doing right now. I'm just playing Akazuki to just rank it up so I can get to the Kitakaze so I can play the next line and get start getting that Research Bureau points so I can, uh, you know, get unlock some more upgrades for my legendary upgrades. So that's what I've been doing lately. Alabama's rushing finally in, and we're just going to see if we can just nail his superstructure area and also get some more fires on the uh on his deck and see here okay we're no more threats are other other than the shinome i can't pronounce that but he is going to bravo cap we are slowly taking bravo cap for our team as well so we're going to go ahead and focus fire on the alabama see if we can get him out of the game and that'll help out our team very very much hopefully none of my other teammates die Ooh, we lost our zeton already and let's get this one and boom there it is splash three Sick 59,000 damage in the first eight minutes of the game, and that is how we uh, burn that uh, side down. Alpha Cap is now secure, now moving to Bravo. RPF is indicating another uh, either threat uh, to south of Bravo. We're going to hold our shots right here. We see if we can spot this Shimanto. All right, Shimanto is almost dead. I think we can melt this guy down if we do it right. 
So we're going to launch some torpedoes right at him and see if he dodges these. But we're going to see if we can start a fire and we knock out one of his guns. Uh, our, our guns should melt majority of his ship. I'm not too afraid of it. Yep, doing very, very good job there. Ooh, and there's the other destroyer. Let's take this opportunity to get as much HP off this guy as possible. We are going to see if we can lead him a little bit as he's turning away. Yep, and getting a little bit right there. And he gets, ooh, takes a lot of damage from our ship. Again, the Akazuki's RP, DPM, so, so freaking powerful. A lot of firepower going on range. Very difficult to gunboat against, and that's why I like this line so much. I'm not afraid to go one-on-one -on -one with uh, any other destroyers in the game when I'm playing the Haraguma line. Just the amount of firepower you're bringing to bear is just unbearable, and it's really, really fun and enjoyable to do it. So let's see if we can speed up here. And okay, we got Bravo Cap. And I don't think the Shimanto is going to be a threat. And Submarine's out in the distance. Let's see if we can go cap him. And Shimanto, we're not going to shoot at him. I think he's too far away for us. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can cap Charlie. And see who is out front here. RPF is indicating somebody's out here. It's either Amagi or the other Destroyer. Not really sure. So we're going to play it safe. Just make sure that uh, we are in a safe spot here. We're not going to fire. Make sure that, yep, Shimanto goes down. Making sure we don't fire too aggressively. His guns are looking our direction. So we're going to wait a little bit longer. Wait till he fires and gives us an opportunity to then smoke up. So, okay. So now his guns are turning away. I think this is a safe moment right here. Safe bet. Go ahead and fire. Look at that. Nine, about 1,400-ish damage uh, just on that one salvo. Again, very, very powerful guns. We smoke up right here. Use this opportunity to uh, fire from cover. I'm not afraid of torpedoes right now. I don't think that destroyer is in our area. He goes down right there. And this is where we turn the game back around. Okay, Charlie Cap is taken. Bravo's Cap is taken. So now all that's left is the destroyer submarine. Of course, Carrier is way out in the distance. We won't worry about him. RPF is low. Again, this is why I like RPF so much. At the very late stage of the game where, you know, this counts so much to know where the position of the enemy is, you definitely need to know where they're at because finding a, a destroyer in this ocean is like finding a needle in a haystack. It's so, so difficult. Just the middle of nowhere. It's good to have RPF. Great situational awareness. Boom, he goes uh, spots, uh, spots us first, and then we get detected, and boom, he gets detected immediately because we're nose in. I just drive straight in, have my guns facing the direction I want to turn, and... Boom! Splash four. That's how we get the last guy right there, last destroyer. And now all that's left is a submarine. Now I, the the key to attacking the submarine is literally I have to go within three kilometers or less to make sure I mitigate the majority of the torp damage. And of course, it, well, while he's underwater, I do not have RPF low, uh, indication. Now that was an unnecessary torpedo hit. Sl very very slow turning uh, destroyers, the Akazuki, Kitakaze, and Haragoma. Very very sluggish, and they don't maneuver as well as other destroyers. But again, notice RPF is still pointing the carrier because the submarine underwater since he's underwater the rpf is not going to be able to locate him, which i think that's kind of odd like well, you should be able to tell me where the submarine's at now it switches since he's on the water now i'm within definitely within three kilometers so i know the torpedoes you know, will not work against me a shotgun style so i'm literally just going to go ahead and uh, fire right at his ship he, he has come up because he ran out of battery power and let's see here yep and we're just going to go ahead and depth charge and do we get a depth charge yeah and bam crack and unleash with the guns and that is how you seal the victory right there with the victory at the end. Look at that. Two Krakens literally back to back. And uh, my gosh, this ship is so freaking powerful. And I definitely recommend it. If you haven't grinded out the Haraguma line, definitely try it out. Very, very powerful gunboats. And they really are just so incredible. Look at second Kraken literally at 839. Later the next game after that I played. Very, very strong, very powerful, very versatile, definitely a cap contester in my my book right there. Number one, the team again, of course, uh, with the help of other friends, 83,000 total damage. Uh, torpedoes did some damage. HE did some 14, I'm sorry, not HE, um, normal guns. HE did damage of 54,000 and fires and, uh, of course, uh, a little bit of AA right there as well. But anyways, hope you guys enjoy the video. It was an amazing, amazing night just playing this thing. It's really powerful again. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like uh, we're doing here, like, subscribe, button below, and appreciate all the support of you guys. Can't thank you guys enough for being great, great supporters, great community, having a blast, making good friends, and learning something at the same time. Until next time, you see me out there, say hi, and we'll see you guys soon. Cheers.